prior to the um, advent of effective HIV therapy, the risk of lymphoma was 200 times that of non-infected individuals. With the availability of effective anti-HIV therapy, the risk is still about 25 times greater than people without HIV infection. So of the 1.1 million people in the United States who are HIV infected, we expect up to 10% of them will be diagnosed with non-Hodgkin lymphoma or Hodgkin lymphoma in their lifetimes. And what we looked at was, could we take this idea of autologous stem cell transplantation, which is the standard of care for non-HIV infected patients with relapsed non-Hodgkin lymphoma and Hodgkin lymphoma that's still sensitive to chemotherapy. So the question was, can we take those patients and offer them autologous transplant? Now, now other groups have looked at this issue of autologous transplant in people with HIV infection. The City of Hope has done this, groups in Europe have done this, and even the AIDS Malignancy Consortium has looked at this issue. But those clinical trials have been largely limited to places which specialized in the care of HIV patients. So part of the issue with this trial was, can we take autologous transplant for HIV patients and extend it to centers that don't traditionally manage patients who may be HIV infected. And to take it one step further, what we did was we used a standard transplant preparative regimen, that is the combination of chemotherapy before the stem cells, and we used a standard supportive care approach for the management of anti-HIV therapy or combination HIV therapy. And what we found is that we could effectively treat this group of patients with quite excellent outcomes. The one-year overall survival was 86.6% in our group of patients, and our one-year mortality was 5% for this group of patients. So what we didn't see was an undue risk of transplant-related damage, of unusual infections, or an increased risk of death from transplant.